Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. Thank you all for joining us. Um, welcome both SCAN members and guests, and thank you for joining our SCAN webinar, which will be on the Motion Analysis Center at Shriners Children's. Um, for our guests today, please know that Shriners Children's Access Navigators, which we also refer to as SCAN, is designed to help improve health equity and access for all children in need of pediatric specialty care. So we do this through education and resource sharing, which is why we are here today. We're proud to share that our team in the Southeast started SCAN in April of 23, and it's grown to about 80 members across four states and about 50 different organizations and divisions that all represent federally qualified healthcare systems or rural health systems. Before we get started, please note that our webinar will be recorded, and we hope that you all will share the recording to those of, of your organization members that were not able to attend today. We also wanted to just let you know that we started a spine and scoliosis series the first quarter of this year, and our next webinar will be on Tuesday, March 26th at 1230, and I will be sending out an invite on that shortly, so just to be on the lookout for that. So now I just want to introduce um, Joanna Ferrari. She is the regional physical therapist leader of the Motion Analysis Center for Shriners Children's. And Joanna has been with Shriners Children's for about five years, and she's been a therapist for 10. So thank you, Joanna, for joining us and presenting to all of us today. And I will let you go ahead and get started. Great. Thanks, Christine. I There we go. It wasn't letting me unmute my mic. Thank you, Christine, and thank you everybody for being here today. Um, can everybody hear me all right? Can see the screen. It says Motion Analysis Center. If you can't, raise your hand and let someone know or pop it in the chat so someone can help you out with that, okay? Um, so welcome. I'm here. Oh, we already have a hand. Can we see, Tammy? Is everything okay? Okay. I can see you okay and I can hear you okay on my Okay, excellent. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. All right. Great. So um motion analysis center. So basically, um we have one here in Greenville. Lord, here we go. There's 14 motion labs in the Shriners Children's System. It makes up the largest network of motion labs in the world. Um, we're able to communicate with each other to improve outcomes. Um for the children, um, as well as improve our processes. Right here in Greenville, we have the top volume in the nation, um, which just uh, helps to emphasize Shriners Children's mission of seeing uh, more children in more places. So what do we do? Um, so we measure the way that our patients walk, and then we analyze those measurements. Um, we see how do they walk differently from other children. And then from there, we can recommend treatment to help them walk better. So you can see as this child is walking, he has cerebral palsy. He's a left hemiplegic cerebral palsy. He's got some deformity about the foot and ankle. He also has some about the knee. And here he is after his motion analysis. This is his post-surgical motion analysis. You can see he's got a much smoother gait about not only the foot and ankle, but the knee as well. Um, so certain things that we were able to capture with our motion analysis was that not only was the foot and ankle involved, but the knee was as well. And we'll have more examples of that coming up. So what do we do? A gait study, a full gait study is about one and a half to three hours long. It includes a thorough physical examination, range of motion, strength, selective control, other neurological testing as well. They get a full marker set, either 22 or 44 little sticker dots, depending on the child and the setup. They also get electromyography, surface, and we also do fine wire as well, um, but mostly surface, uh, meaning that we don't do anything invasive to get the, uh, the muscle uh, detection. Um, and we test with and without braces to see what kind of um, efficacy the braces have on the child's gait. 
Um, we also do foot pressure analyses. These are shorter studies. They're 15 to 30 minutes long. Um, some sites do a physical examination with it. Unfortunately, due to our volume here, we're unable to fit a physical examination in, um, but they usually get one from our clinic staff prior to coming to us. We only do a limited marker set, but it does spit out this really nice and useful foot pressure um, analysis so that we can see what's going on with the child um, in that regard. We also do return to sport testing. So we assess for risky movement patterns for ACL retear prior to return to sport. It's a three to four hour long test. Six movements are analyzed in graphs. Graft, and then we also do a biodex, which is isokinetic strength assessment. That's the gold standard for return to sport for athletes, especially after an ACL tear. And we have that equipment right here in our lab. So we're able to not only um, take this, this is almost, uh, this is cutting edge type of stuff, the sports analysis. It's newer to the field. We're seeing what we can learn from it. Um, but then we can also take that and combine it with our gold standard um, to really get some good outcomes for these children. So we always start with a video and it seems simple enough, but what we do here in our lab is we make sure that we get both angles at the same time. This is really helpful. The physicians will tell you this, we'll tell you this in here. That way I can pause the video at any time and I can see what's happening from two angles. Again, really helpful for teasing out what's happening. Like I said, we do a thorough physical examination. You can see there's our physical exam form on the left side of your screen. Um, again, range of motion, strength, neurological testing, um, and we always have uh, four hands there. So two folks, four hands to make sure, again, that we're getting the most accurate measurements that we can. Um, something that we have the luxury of is time in the uh, Motion Analysis Center. Again, they're preparing for three hours of motion testing. Um, so we can really take our time with these measurements and make sure that we're being accurate. We also do electromyography, also known as EMG, little pads that listen to the muscles. They tell us what the muscles are doing while the child is walking. Um, these are the five muscles that we usually listen to with um, the EMG. Um, as far as gait goes, these are the five that are either going to interrupt or they're going to help the gait cycle. So we wanna see where they're active, where they're not supposed to be active. Um, and if overactive muscles are present, uh, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to do surgery, physical therapy, Botox, bracing, what can we do to help calm those muscles down. Um, so talking about markers, I said uh, the 22 or 44 little dots. So you can see on this child, all those lit up little spots, those are our dots. She has a set of 22 on her. Those are placed on uh, anatomically on anatomical landmarks, very specific to create an individualized data set. You can see if they were to get 44, they would get all these ones on the feet so we could capture the way the foot moves. And it spits out this little video game stick figure man. So what's cool about this is this the exact this is the exact same technology they use for um, Hollywood movies and video games. This is how they get their animations. Um, it all started with clinical gait analysis. So the cameras around the room they can't see you and me. They can only see those little reflective dots, and it spits out this video game skeleton at us. From there. The video game skeleton is made into all of these graphs. So we plot the ankle, knee, hip, pelvis, and trunk, and we plot in all three planes. So we plot the sagittal, coronal, and transverse plane, you know, uh, the forward and backward side to side and rotational planes. The gray band is what you and I might do when we're walking at each of our joints. The blue is what the child's left leg is doing, and the red is what the child's right leg, right leg is doing. So we take a look and we see where they're deviating most from typical, and that can tell us where we need to do our intervention. For instance, on this child, a very simplified version, you can see that the shape of the knee curve, the shape of the, the blue and the red is nowhere near the shape of the gray, and they're falling pretty off the curve there. So we're gonna wanna try to do something to optimize the way the knee is functioning. What is causing this deviation and what can we do for that child to help? We also do the foot pressure analysis, like I talked about. Again, it spits out this graph right here. A little different from your Dr. Scholl's foot pressure. This is a dynamic foot pressure. So you can see where the child's heel hits the floor for this child. If their child hit the floor with their toe first, you would see that as well. Um, and then you see the trajectory of the center of pressure as the child moves throughout their gait cycle. Again, this can give us a whole bunch of information about what's going on with that child. For instance, for this one, you can see a big old pressure point and a lot of points of the center of pressure right here on this side of the foot and this side of the foot. A lot of the times that comes with some pain, um, usually associated with some sort of foot deformity. So from there, we try to figure out what to do. Are we going to do a certain insert to offload that? Are we going to do bracing? Or is it something that's more appropriate for a surgical intervention to correct that loading pattern? 
From there, we have a multidisciplinary discussion. Every case receives this multi multidisciplinary data review for the full gate studies, has an orthopedic surgeon, physical therapist, and other disciplines as well. Those are site dependent, but for us, we have a biomechanical engineer um, and an exercise uh, science uh, woman as well to help. Um, and we come together to determine the optimal intervention. Doesn't always mean surgery. Uh, sometimes that means bracing or physical therapy, and we'll see some really great um, examples of that moving forward. So speaking of, here's a bread and butter case for us, a nine-year-old patient with cerebral palsy. Um, we determined that she needed these procedures coming in, and here she is one year after surgery. So as you take a look, um, a couple of things that stand out to me when I'm looking at this at face value is she's probably expending a lot less energy while she's walking. Additionally, she's getting to that age where maybe she's noticing that she's walking a little bit differently from her peers, um, and she's looking a little bit more typical in that second video. So hopefully giving her one, more energy to get throughout the school day, but two, a little bit more confidence as well. This is a patient with the same diagnosis, cerebral palsy, two years later. We would have hoped to see a patient like this prior to them getting to this point. Um, but regardless, we're glad she came. We're glad we got to see her. If you look at her purely from a clinical standpoint, you might think, oh my gosh, let's throw everything but the kitchen sink at her. Let's get her upright. Let's do this. Let's do that. We actually determined using our data that she needed a lot less surgery than the first patient. So like I was saying, it's not always about what surgeries we are doing, but what surgeries we're avoiding. Um, and this is based on years of experience and, and learning from all of these studies to figure out what's going to work best for this child. And we have to give her major props because you don't get to this point without a lot of hard work and therapy. So here she is one year after surgery which I just think is incredible. We get, we always talk about, we get the goosebumps every time we see these videos. Um, so you can see again, probably expending a lot less energy. Gosh, the relief her shoulders and her knees must feel from being able to walk upright and without those lost strand crutches uh, must be incredible. So again, the true multidisciplinary approach really is what brought this patient to where she is. Here's an eight and a half year old patient with in towing, also known as pigeon towing. If you look at her from a clinical standpoint, you can see that her patellas are facing inward, known as winking or squinting patella, um, which usually tells us that that internal rotation is coming from the femurs. Um, however, using our technology, we were able to determine that not only were both femurs um, involved, but her left tibia was involved as well. And had that been missed, potentially she would have had to come back for another surgery. Um, the in towing, um, we generally really don't do too much with unless there's pain and tripping and falling. So again, had we missed that left tibia, potentially she would have still been in pain. She would have been tripping and falling. And then that would have been two surgical instances. Um, and we want to get these kids back to being kids as quick as we can. So luckily we were able to do it all in one. And here we have an idiopathic toe walker, nine-year-old. You can see she's wearing five-inch heels at all times. Again, we would hope to have seen her before she got to this point. Um, however, she came to us and we're glad she did. So things that our technology can do, as you all probably know, idiopathic toe walking isn't always an idiopathic, right? There's sometimes something neurological underlying. We can take some little hints in our data that can tell us, oh, maybe there's a little something neurological. Maybe we need to send her to neuro before we do something orthopedic. Um, that can just help us clue us in a little bit more as to what's going on. Luckily for her, she was truly idiopathic. Again, if you have experience with this population, you know the risk of recurrence is really high. So what we want to do is make sure that we're doing the level of surgery um, that's necessary to ensure that one year later, she's still walking flat-footed. And uh, sure enough, we determined that she needed a tendo Achilles lengthening, and here she is one year later. So you might be wondering what's an appropriate referral. Um, we say ambulatory with or without a device for at least 50 feet without needing a seated rest break. They can static stand with or without the support of a, an assistive device for at least five minutes. 
follow basic one-step commands, reasonable attention span and patience for a multi-hour exam, tolerate physical exam on a table or a mat on the floor, and tolerate stickers all over their body. You saw what it looks like when they're suited up. That's a lot for some kiddos. We do get referrals outside of these guidelines all the time. We have tricks up our sleeve to get as much data as possible. One thing I didn't put on here that I probably should have, we usually start at age six, but we have seen five and four-year-olds that are, that are appropriate based on behaviors. Um, so use your best judgment. So how would you refer? You could call us. You could fill out a referral form on our website. Uh, we don't require physician referrals. Families can also call us directly to get referred as well. If you're referring for the motion line, make sure you specify that. The patient will then be set up for a telehealth for initial screening. Uh, if appropriate, They'll be set up with a motion lab appointment from there. Sometimes our, provi our providers need a little bit more in-person information um, before. So sometimes they're sent to the clinic first and then they're set up from motion lab from there. All right. Any questions? And just a reminder, um, Shriners Children's provides care regardless of a family's ability to pay or insurance status. We saw a really sweet message. Thank you for taking care of um, one of their patients with no health insurance. Um, but we also provide transportation assistance if that's something that the, the families need, as well as interpreter services. Okay, well, if there aren't any questions, thank you all so very much for joining us. Joanna, thank you for your amazing presentation. Yeah. We have the, the scan at shrinet.org email address if, every, if anyone has any questions or if they want to be added as an official scan member or know of a topic they'd like us to discuss. So thanks again. Thank you, everybody.